Okay, uh, let's talk today about how to find the big boys trend. Now, everything starts with knowing the trend. Are we going up or are we going down? Or in other words, are we buying or are we selling? That's the question every day. Now, the safest trade is when you trade in the direction of the trend of the day, and that also matches the overall trend. Does that mean that you can't, if you have good software, trade against the trend? Uh, but beginners should always learn to trade the trend of the day when it matches the overall trend. Now, in trend trading, two trends exist. You, in the illustration to the right, you can see that we have a major trend that's going north. It could be going south. It could be just the opposite, okay? And then we have a retracement of the major trend line. You see the candles were going up, and then it retraced back down to the trend line and then went again. Now, you can draw the trend with a single trend line. You could use a channel key, linear regression, anything that your charting software has that will make it easier to see. Now, in the illustration to the right, are we looking for a reason to buy or are we looking for a reason to sell? And the correct answer is we're looking for a reason to buy. A lot of new traders will say, well, it's been going up that far, so it can't go any higher. It has to reverse. That's not true. Um, you want to make sure that uh, you're trading with the direction of the trend, and the trend is up here. So how do we spot a trend? Well, the candle on the right of the screen is the one that is forming correct uh, right now. And if you look right to left, if you see that the uh, on the top there, number one is lower than number two. And you see in resistance number two is lower than number three. So we have three resistances that's stepping down, and we have a downtrend, OK? You can see one, the high of number one is lower than the high of number two. The high of number two is lower than the high of number three. Therefore, we have a downtrend. Those tops or those highs are called resistances. This is just the opposite in the bottom here. In an uptrend, uh, the low of number one is still higher than the low of number two. And the low of number two is still higher than the low of number three. So uh, those are called support. And that's what actually creates trends, support and resistance. Now, it takes two points to develop a trend. but you do not know that you have a trend until you have a third point that will confirm that it actually is a trend uh, in um, uh, in the making. Okay, so uh, you know as a new trader, make that your rule. Wait until you have three higher lows or three lower highs, depending on which way you're going. Now. Just to reinforce this, in an uptrend, the chart is establishing higher lows. You see 4, 3, 2, 1 down there, and also higher highs, OK? And those uh, low points down there are support points. Now, support is defined actually by Tom DeMarc did it the best. You have one candle shown in the middle of the screen there that is lower than the candles on the left or the right on it. Now, if you have one candle on each side of that lower candle, then you have strong support. But if you have two candles on either side, like shown there, then you have extremely strong support. And it's, uh, it's best to trust extremely strong support, not strong support by itself. Okay, they can look like anything, as you can see. There's all kinds of any any combination you can imagine. As long as there's one candle sticking down, is support. Now the downtrend is just the opposite is happening. The candlesticks are forming lower highs and lower lows, and those are called resistance points. You can see four, three, two, one are all coming down the hill there. Okay. So resistance is just the opposite. We have one candle that sticks up with a wick, and then we have at least one on each side and hopefully two on each side so that we have strong resistance. And once again, they can look like anything you've ever seen. So let's uh, reinforce this here. An uptrend is when the chart is establishing higher lows and higher highs. And a downtrend is when the chart is establishing higher, uh, lower highs and lower lows. Now, the market reacts based on support or resistance. These are called bounces, dips, rallies, and they are extremely important. 
Every support and resistance in the past creates a decision. So as the market is moving down towards support, it has to make a decision. Do we blow through it or do we react to it and turn? And as we move up towards resistance, we have to make a decision. Do we blow through it or do we react to it and turn? And the trend determines the higher probability. Right? So in a downtrend, as the currency moves towards this resistance point, the trend has a tendency to turn that currency. In fact, it takes an awful lot of money to break out of a trend that's already established. It's just the opposite coming down. As the currency was coming down towards the trend line, uh, the trend gives it a higher probability of turning back up into the trend. And that's why it's important for you to know where they are. So our business is anticipation. Wouldn't you love to have the move on the right over there? Yeah, that'll make your house payment right here. Well, actually, you could have anticipated that move by just simply going back in that area up on the left where it's nice and flat, and the currency is telling you what we're going to do. There is the first high. There is the second high. That little wick there has two to the left and two to the right, and it is lower than the first one. And then we have another little dinky one in there, and we could have a downtrend in effect. And you, if, you, if you did nothing more but simply put a sell on on one of those trading signals there, uh, and with a proper stop, you'd have made that money. Let's take a look at an uptrend. Same thing. Here, wouldn't you like to have this big old move? Sure you would. Okay, well, the chart is telling you down in here. There's your lowest one. There's the second lowest one and the third lowest one. So now we can see that we have an uptrend. And had you done nothing more than put a buy in there, you could have been in that trade. Now, when the currency has a sideways move, it has a very high chance of continuing the trend. Okay? Uh, so I'll give you an example here. Uh, I've got a, that currency that's moving up, and then it goes sideways. Okay? Well, we went into this sideways move going up. So the percentage chance of it continuing up is very, very high. So we go on up, we hit the top, we make the corner, come back down, and now we've got another sideways move. Okay? Well, that move going, we came into that sideways move going down. That means that we will probably go down. And you can see that's exactly what happened. So you need to begin to watch for those things as you, uh, as you look at trends and how the currency is moving inside the trends. Now let's talk about heart line and trend walls, okay? So once we have one, two, three higher lows, as you can see down there, we now know we have a trend. So we can just um, use a heart line, or I mean, you can use a trend uh, tool of whatever you want to use to click here and click on the high right up there, and you'll get something that looks like this. Now, I'm illustrating a channel key because I like channels, okay? And uh, you will get something here that shows you what the trend is doing. And those trend walls, the outer green lines, are very, very important because the market respects them. In fact, not respect them is a very, very strong sign that they may possibly reverse, okay? So, 80% of the time, the market will reach the heart line from the top or the bottom, okay? So, for instance, right down here, you know, there's the heart line. And from the bottom here, we had an 80% chance of going up to that heart line. Then we run along the heart line for a while, and then we break on through, and we almost go up to the top of the trend wall. Well, now we have an 80% chance of coming back to the heart line, okay? All right, then we go through the heart line down to the bottom of the trend wall. The walls are respected, and so now our target is an 80% chance of getting back up to the heart line. All right, so it's very important to add to your trading, knowing where you are inside the trend. All right. So uh, yeah, if you use a channel key, it's pretty simple to use. You have four channels there, zone one and zone four, the outer edges, okay? And in zone one and four, you're looking for reversals, okay? As the market comes down in zone four, you'd look for a reversal back up to zone one. And when it hits zone one, you'd be looking for a reversal back down to room four. Now down here at the bottom, we're looking for a reversal back up. And remember, we have an 80% chance of getting to that heart line right there. Okay, so that's how you use that. However, in zones two and three, the market could go up or down. Now it typically has a, t uh, 
uh, likes to trend, okay? So you see it doesn't have much problem going down. But look at how much trouble it has trying to go up against the overall trend. That's what you need to see. The overall trend here is down, and you see how hard it is for them to go up against it? And then they get up in the top, make the turn, and see how easy it is to come back down. So using a channel key will really dramatically help you in knowing where you are in the midst of the whole trend. So, how do we trade an uptrend? Okay, well, the first thing we've got to have is we have to have one, two, three supports. Once we get three supports, we buy. When we get to the top of the trend wall, okay, then we will sell our position and you will wait until it comes back down to the trend wall. At the bottom of the trend wall, you buy again and you take it up to the top of the trend wall. And then you and then you sell your position and back down. And you do that as long as it will allow you to do it. Okay, so you will buy after the market has reacted or retraced back to the trend line low. Those are the supports. Uh, trading in a downtrend is just the opposite. First of all, we've got to have one, two, three points of resistance that tells us we actually have a downtrend built. Now we can start selling. We'll sell on number three and we will get out of our trade at the bottom of the trend wall. We will wait until it comes back to the trend wall and we will sell again. And we will continue to do that as long as the market will let us. So we sell after the market has surged to make a lower high equal with the trend line. Okay, so the 240 minute is the banker's chart. It's where the big boys trade, okay? That is the big picture. And what you want to do is always put your trend line on the trend wall. That's what you want to do. Always put it on the trend, on, um, um, uh, on the 240 chart. Anything less than a 240 chart is nothing more than a channel working inside the 240 chart. And in, in fact, the, the day chart also is a very important one. Okay. Now, knowing where the trend wall is will prevent you from making a bad trade right into it. Okay. So it's important that you spend time every day on a 240-minute chart. Your trades won't take place on a 240-minute chart, but you've got to know where you are in the big picture. All right. So here's an illustration of how to trend. I tried to find a way that would make it easy to understand. Okay. So the 240 minute is your compass. Okay. I live in Texas here, so uh, if I want to go to Chicago, Chicago is north of me. However, I live in Austin, Texas. So if I drive directly north from Austin, Texas, I will not hit Chicago. What I will hit will be Fargo, North Dakota. All right. So obviously, I need something besides just the direction. What I need is a freeway going to Chicago, and that is a 60-minute or a 30-minute chart. Right? Once that 60-minute, 30-minute chart tells me I'm going to go in the direction of the compass, then I just need to find an entry, and that might be the 3, the 5, or the 10-minute as well, getting me into a trade down on a compression that's time compression that's low enough for me to trade with a reasonable stop. So when we're determining the trend of today, we're looking first for pressure to move in one direction or the other, and then where are the trend walls? Where am I? If it's going up, but it's headed directly into a trend wall, do I really want to make this trade? And does this match the overall trend? In other words, if I'm going up and the overall trend is up, my trade is statistically more probable to be a success. So where the trend walls are tells you whether you can even make the trade. And if this matches the overall trend, then that is a very positive situation for me. Now, if we get a buy or a sell indicator on our charts, depending on what kind of, you know, things you use to enter your trade. You might use oscillators, you might use MACDs or moving average crossovers, anything. Uh, if you're a pro-act trader, then it's pretty simple to see it. But uh, uh, the idea is, can we make the trade? Okay. So the overall trend is determined by the 240-minute chart. But it is safest to trade when the 60 and the 30 is also in the same direction as the overall trend. The trend of the day is then determined by the 60 or the 30-minute chart. 
once again, you can see here's the overall trend going down. Okay, so the great trade, there's these the trends of the day right there. Now the trend of the day and, and the first one was down, and you see that would have been a great trade to make. But notice the trend of the day on the first move up. See how hard it was? They kept turning it and turning it and turning it, and those big huge red candles there will take your money. Okay. And then when we turn over and we head down with the trend of the day on the third line there, you see there was very little movement back up as it continued on down. See? So how do we spot the end of an uptrend? Okay, so you've been trading it up and you've been buying at the trend line. And so suddenly right here we get uh, at the bottom of the trend wall. Oh, excuse me. Back to that. Uh, at the bottom of the trend wall, we're expecting this to bounce, and it doesn't bounce up. Instead, it goes right through the trend wall. Well, that's your first indication that this might be over. So you simply go back to the previous support, and you draw a horizontal line. And if it breaks through that horizontal line, basically the uptrend is they're telling you it's over. So here's a here's an example on a chart. Okay, so this is where the breakout occurs. Okay, you can see we have a very strong trend line going, and all of a sudden we break out of the trend wall. Okay, all right. Now that doesn't mean anything yet. Now we go back to the previous support and we draw a line. And once we break through that line, this uptrend is toast. See that? Very simple. All right, so what about a downtrend? It's just the same, opposite, okay? We're, we've been selling every time it comes up to the trend wall, and all of a sudden it comes up to the trend wall, and instead of turning and going back down, it keeps going right on through the trend wall. In this case, you go back to the previous resistance, draw a 90-degree horizontal line, and if it breaks through that line, then the uptrend is, uh, the downtrend is toast, okay? So here's an example. I've got one right here. All right, so there's uh, where it breaks out right there, and you can see by just drawing a horizontal line, there as soon as it breaks out up here we're now going the other way very simple to see so you know here's the overall trend once again this is the trend of the day that is the trend of the day so which way would you trade right now obviously you want to be trading down okay now the trend of the day that was up against the trend is the most dangerous trade Make sure that you read this disclaimer, and uh, we hope to see you on Proact Traders uh, calls. We have uh, free training every Tuesday night, every Thursday night, and bi-weekly we have an advanced class. All of that's free to our traders. And that's at ProactTraders.com.